Hi everyone, it's Professor Primerton, and in this video we're going to talk about getting information from the graph of a function. So we found out what a definition of a function is, and we also talked about some of the properties of a function in the previous videos. Many of the properties that we're going to find about a function can actually be obtained easily from the graph. So in this section we're going to talk about how the graph tells us whether the values of a function are either increasing or decreasing, and also to tell us whether there's a maximum or minimum value for the graph of a function. So in this video we're going to talk about how to determine the domain and range, also express an interval notation for a graph of a function, and then we're also going to be able to solve an equation or inequality using a graph. The complete graph of a function actually contains a lot of information about a function that we can't actually get from the formula without actually visualizing what the function's properties are. So to analyze the graph of a function, we need to keep in mind that the height of the graph is the value of the function. It's the value of the y values or the output values of the function. And then we can actually read the values from the graph. So let's talk about the domain and range from a graph. We've talked about how to find the domain of a function from its formula, but we haven't actually talked about how to find the domain or range from just the graph. So the graph of the function actually helps us visualize or picture the domain and range, basically from the values that make up the graph on the x-axis, the x values, or what values make up the y-axis or the y values. The domain and range can be obtained from the following figure. The domain, keep in mind, is a set of all x values or input values that make up the function. And the range are the set of all corresponding y values or output values that make up the function. So for example, in this graph, we have a function that actually goes up and hits the highest point and then comes back down. We know that the domain are all the x values that correspond to points on the graph of the function. And same way with the range, the range are all the y values that make up the points that make up the function's graph. Let's say we have a point that at 2 comma 3, that's where the graph will start on the left, and the graph will end at this point 6 comma 8. I'm just making these points up, and the highest point on the graph will be 4 comma 11. Let's find out what the domain and range are and actually write them using interval notation. So notice that the x values are making up the domain, or the input values. The graph goes no farther to the left than x equals 2. So when you write interval notation, you'll want x equals 2 to be included because there is a point that's a filled-in point, so it's included to part of the graph. So the domain will start at x equals 2, and the graph will continue using all the x values until you get to x equals 6, and that's where the graph stops, at its right endpoint, and x equals 6 is included, so you also want a square bracket. So interval notation would be 2 comma 6 with square brackets on 2 and 6. On the other hand, the range are the y values. The y values go from down up, so the smallest y value that we see that's part of the graph is when y equals 3, and there's a point there again, so you want 3 included for the y values in the range, so a bracket on 3, but the highest y value isn't 8. The highest y value on the graph was actually when y equals 11, and 11 is actually included because there's still a point there that makes up the graph, so the range would be closed interval 3 comma 11. So you should be thinking that when you find the domain and range from a graph of a function, the function's graph actually casts what you can think of as a shadow. So if you think about this graph, it's casting a shadow onto the x-axis from every single point that makes up the function's graph. And same thing for the range. You can think of the function actually casting a shadow onto the y-axis to find the range. Now a couple things that we need to review about interval notation. Whenever we express the domain and range using interval notation, keep in mind that the input and output values if they're included in the interval, then you want to use close brackets or square brackets. Otherwise, if the values are not included in the domain or range, you want to use open parentheses. So let's talk about example one. We're going to find out the domain and range from a graph. We don't have the function's formula, just its graph. So find the domain and range for each of the following functions and express your answers using interval notation. So number one, we have this graph. There are no arrows on the ends, so if there's no arrows on the ends, you can assume that the graph will continue going down to the left and continue going down to the right. Unless it actually has a point that actually where the graph stops, then you can assume that there's arrows. So the graph will continue going down to the left. It'll come up, it'll hit a point 2 comma 7, then it'll come down and hit this point at 4 comma 2, and then it'll come up to 5 comma 6, and then the graph will continue going down as you go to the right. So the domain are the x values. So it's what input values make up the function's graph. Well, the domain is x values. x values go from left to right. So how far does the graph go to the left? Well, the graph will continue going down, but also goes to the left forever. So the graph will continue going to the left towards negative infinity, and the graph will go to the right forever because the graph's going down, but also to the right forever. 
and it uses every single x value between negative infinity and infinity. Or, in other words, it's the set of all real numbers for the domain. On the other hand, the range knows that the graph will go down forever, so the range would start at negative infinity, and infinity or in negative infinity, you always use parentheses, but the highest y value, there is one. The highest y value that we see that makes up the graph is y equals 7. So you want 7 included and with a square bracket. So negative infinity to 7. All right, number two. Let's take a look at this graph. This graph does not have arrows on the left end or right end because it looks like the graph will stop at this point, this closed point at negative 3 comma 3. The graph will fall to the right until you get to 0 comma negative 1. And then the graph will rise until you get to 3 comma 4. And then it will fall again until 4 comma 3. And then the graph will stop. That's an endpoint for the function's graph. So let's talk about the domain. The domain are the set of all input values or x values. The graph goes no farther to the left when than x equals negative 3. And it goes no farther to the right than x equals positive 4. So negative 3 with a square bracket and then 4 square bracket. So this means all x values between negative 3 and 4, including x equals negative 3 and x equals 4, are used as part of the graph. In the range, the smallest y value that we see on the graph is when y equals negative 1. At this point, 0, negative 1, that's the smallest y value, negative 1. And the graph will go no higher than the y value 4. So the range of this function will be negative 1 to 4, also with square brackets, because there are points when y equals negative 1 and when y equals 4. And then number 3, let's say we have this function that looks like a piecewise defined function because it's broken up into pieces. You have three different parts of the graph, and now we're going to talk about the domain and range. The domain will have to be split up into separate intervals because there's different pieces. It looks like the graph will go no farther to the left than negative 2 when x equals negative 2. And that's a filled in point, so you do want x equals negative 2 included as part of the domain. This part of the graph goes no farther to the right than when x equals negative 1. It stops at this point, negative 1, 1. And negative 1, 1, if you notice, there's an open circle. That is not a point as part of the graph. It's excluded. So negative 1 is not an x value that's part of the domain. So you would have square bracket negative 2 to negative 1, but then a parenthesis on negative 1. Then the graph continues with another segment when x equals negative 1. It starts at this point, negative 1, comma, negative 1. So it starts when x equals negative 1, and it rises to the right until you get to x equals positive 1. And both of these endpoints are included, x equals negative 1 and x equals positive 1. So you want square brackets on that, negative 1 to 1. And then the third part of the graph, it looks like it starts at this open circle or hole in the graph at 1, comma, 1. And then it falls to the right until you get the 2, comma, negative 2. And so, again, 1, comma, 1, when x equals 1, that's not included as part of the graph, so that would be an, a parenthesis or an open parenthesis. You would have one parenthesis and then two, x equals two is included because it's a filled in point, and so you have a square bracket. Now notice that you can simplify this interval. You're going from negative two to negative one, but then negative one is included. And then you're going up to x equals one, and then that is included, and then you come down to this last part, and you're using x equals one from the previous part, and it goes up to x equals two. You're using all the x values between negative 2 and 2. There are no breaks in the graph between the x values. You're using every single x value between negative 2 and all the way up to positive 2. So this would be square bracket negative 2 to 2. Make sure that you simplify the interval since negative 1 and, and positive 2 are actually x values that make up the graph. On the other hand, for the same reason, the range, you would go from down up so the smallest y value would be negative 2 with, at this point, and it's included because there's a point there, and it's filled in. And then notice that you're using all the y values up to positive 2. So the range would be from negative 2 to 2 also. Okay. Notice that at these holes in the graph, or open circles, y equals 1 on either case, but this part that's in the middle, it is using y equals 1. So you are using y equals 1 as part of the range. So that would be no breaks in the y values either. So that's why it's negative 2 to 2 with square brackets. All right, example 2. We're going to obtain information from a graph. The function g is graphed in the following figure. Use the graph to answer each of the following problems. So number 1, we're going to use the graph, and I've labeled all the points that we need. We have g of negative 4. When we're trying to find g of negative 4, that is looking for the output value whenever the input value is negative 4. So when the input value, that's the x value, you look for x equals negative 4, and the output value is this y equals 3. So g of negative 4 is equal to 3. g of negative 2, for the same reason, their input value is negative 2. So you find that point when x equals negative 2. The y value is 2. So that would be the output value. 
g of 0 is the y-intercept. It's where the graph crosses the y-axis. Notice when the input value is 0, the y value is negative 2. Whenever you have g of 2, the x value is 2. You have a point here at x equals 2, and the y value is 1. So the y value would be output 1. So notice when we found out the value of g of 2, it's not two different values for the output. If you input x equals 2, it's not 1 and 3, because you can't have two different y values for one x value. That would violate the definition of a function. Well, when x equals 2, this point is when y equals 1. This is not included when x equals 2. The y value is 3. That is not filled in point, so that's not part of the graph. So you do only have one y value when x equals 2. And then if you want to find g of 4, you look for when the input value is 4 on the x-axis, and the y value is, well, it's right on the x-axis, so the y value would be 0, or the output value. So number 2, let's find out the domain and range of the function like we did in a previous example. So the domain, notice that this is broken up into two different parts, two different pieces of the graph, so let's find out each part separately. The x values that make up the function's graph, that will be determining the domain. So the graph goes no farther to the left than when x equals negative 4. So you want negative 4 included because there's a point there. So that would be a square bracket. And then this part of the graph will use all the x values until you get to x equals 2. And again, there's a point there, so that would be included. So you have negative 4 to 2 with square brackets. And now for the other part, union, you have the other part of the graph starting when x equals 2, but it's not including x equals 2 because it's an open circle or an open point. So that would be a parenthesis on 2. And then this part of the graph continues until you get to x equals 4, and there is a point there. It's filled in, so you want 4 included as part of the domain. This interval can also be simplified. Notice that you actually are using all the x values from negative 4. You are using x equals 2. And then this other part of the graph will actually use all the x values from 2 to 4. So the domain of this function's graph is actually negative 4 to 4, including the endpoints. There are no x values that are omitted between negative 4 and 4. And then the range. The smallest y value that makes up the graph is when y equals negative 2, and there is a point there, so that is included with a square bracket. And then the graph goes no higher than y equals 3. Well, this point's not included when y equals 3, but this y value when y equals 3 is included, because there is a point there. So that would be negative 2 to 3 with square brackets for the range. Number 3, find all the values of x for which g of x is equal to 3. So notice that the difference between problem number 3 and problem number 1. Problem number one was asking, here's your input value, find the output value. Number three is saying, find the input values, or the x values, when they give us the output value, or the y value, is three. So we're trying to find out what x values from the graph will make up when y equals three. So you have a couple places to look for. So when y equals three, you're looking for where does the graph actually hit the y value three. Well, this is an open circle, so that is not actually part of the graph. But when y equals three, x had to be the input value negative 4. So to solve this equation, g of x equals 3, the only x value that satisfies that equation, or input value that satisfies that equation, is x equals negative 4. And then number 4, the last part of this problem, estimate the value of x for which g of x is less than or equal to 0. Express your answer using interval notation. So what does it mean that g of x is less than or equal to 0? g of x is just standing for the output value, or the y value. So you can change this problem to be g of x is less than or equal to 0 means the same thing as y is less than or equal to 0. Where are the y values less than or equal to 0 on a graph? If y is less than 0, that means it's below the x-axis. It's where your y values are negative. If the y value is equal to 0, that would be the x-axis. That's where the y values are equal to 0. So you're looking for where are all the x values that are on the graph that the graph is below the x-axis or on the x-axis. So let's take a look. So if you notice from the figure, the graph will be on the x-axis when x equals negative 1, and it will also be on the x-axis when x is about 1.8, I'm going to say, and also when x equals 4. So that satisfies that part. It will be on the x-axis at negative 1, 1 1.8, and positive 4, but then the graph is below the x-axis anywhere between negative 1 for x values and the x value 1.8. So this would be I want negative 1 included because it's on the x-axis, so negative 1 with a square bracket to 1.8, and that's also on the x-axis, so that would be a square bracket. Anywhere between negative 1 and 1.8, the graph is below the x-axis or on the x-axis. And then we also have just this single point. 
just x equals 4 also that satisfies the inequality. So our solution set written in interval notation would be this. It would be a square bracket on negative 1 up to 1 1.8, also with a square bracket because 1.8 was on the x-axis, union because there's another part of the solution. Well, we don't want to use interval notation on 4 because it's just a single number. If you want to use a single number, then you use set notation. So curly brackets and just the number 4 in them. So square bracket, negative 1 to 1 1.8 with a square bracket, union, and then curly brackets around 4 would solve this inequality. G of x is less than or equal to 0. Okay, and then the last thing we're going to talk about in this video, we're going to talk about how to solve equations and inequalities graphically. So you only have the graph, and we're going to find out how do you solve an equation using just the graph, or how do you solve an inequality using just the graph. We're going to be able to compare two different functions, f of x and g of x, by drawing their graphs and finding out where these two functions' graphs intersect one another. The solutions to an equation, anytime you have f of x is equal to g of x, where these two functions are equal to one another, and you're trying to solve it using a graph, you're looking for what are the x values of where the two graphs will intersect one another. So you're trying to find out what are the x values that both graphs have in common, where are the output values the same, you're trying to find the intersection points. If you want to find out the solutions to an inequality, f of x less than g of x, you're trying to find all the x values where the function's graph, g, the output values of g, are larger than the output values or the y values of f. So with a graph, where is g of x higher than the function f at what x values? So these two figures will illustrate the difference between a solution to an equation versus solutions to an inequality. Solutions to an equation are just the specific x values where the two functions will intersect one another. So it would be x equals a and x equals b is where the functions f of x and g of x intersect one another. It's where f of x, the y value f of x, is equal to the y value g of x. On the other hand, if you're trying to find the solutions to an inequality, you're trying to find the set of all x values where one function is above the other. So g of x is this function, and this f is this function's graph. You're trying to find out what are all the x values where g is above f, or the y value of g is above the y value of f. Well, it starts at this intersection point where g is above the function's f graph, and it stops being above the function f at x equals b. So you're still trying to find the intersection points, x equals a and x equals b, but it's not those as the solutions. The solutions are all the x values where g is above f. So it would be all the x values between x equals a and x equals b are solutions. So you actually have an interval of x values. So you do not want x equals a included or x equals b included because this is a strict inequality. It's just where it's less than. If it was less than or equal to, then you would include the intersection points x equals a and x equals b. In example 3, we're going to solve both an equation and inequality graphically. So solve the following equation or, or inequalities graphically. When solving the inequalities, express your answer using interval notation. So number one, we have an equation. x cubed plus 6 is equal to 2x squared plus 5x. So we have this equation, and we have just this graph to use. So to use this graph, we only have one graph. We don't have two graphs, f of x and g of x. You could look for intersection points if you graph the left side of the equation and you graph the right side of the equation separately, and then you're looking for the intersection points. But since we only have one graph, we need an equation that we actually can use. So let's take this equation and set it equal to zero. So that means move all the terms to one side of the equation. x cubed plus 6 we'll keep on the left side, and then we'll subtract 2x squared to the left side of the equation and subtract 5x to the left side of the equation. That way the right side of the equation will now be zero. So you have x cubed, subtract 2x squared, subtract 5x plus 6, that's equal to zero. That actually turns out, that is the graph that we're given. It's x cubed subtract 2x squared minus 5x plus 6. It's that function. So now we're looking for where is the output values of this function equal to the y value 0. That would be where the graph is actually on the x-axis or called x-intercepts. So if you look at the graph, you have an x-intercept when x equals negative 2, when x equals positive 1, and when x equals positive 3. Those are the solutions to the equation. It's where the graph will actually cross the x-axis or touch the x-axis. In this case, it's where it's crossing. So you have x equals negative 2, x equals 1, and x equals 3. Those are the solutions to the equation that we were given. And then number 2, we have the inequality. 2x squared plus 3 is less than 5x plus 6, and we have this graph to use. Notice that there are two different graphs here. 
You have one function is 2x squared plus 3. That's this parabola, that quadratic functions graph. And then we also have the graph of 5x plus 6. It's the linear function or straight line graph. That's g of x. So we have two different graphs that we can use. We don't actually have to rearrange any of the terms. We're trying to find out where is the graph of 5x plus 6, the g of x function, where is it greater than 2x squared plus 3, or the function f of x. So if you notice on the graph, I need to find out the intersection points first. So that will tell me where the interval will start and end. So I have an intersection point whenever x is equal to negative 0.5, it looks like, and whenever x is equal to positive 3. Now notice that those points will not actually be part of the solution because it's a strict inequality. It's strictly less than. Where are the y values of g of x larger than only the y values of f of x, 2x squared plus 3? So where is the line above the graph of the parabola? Well, it's between these two intersection points where the line is above the parabola. So the interval notation that would solve this inequality would be it would be negative 0.5 with a parenthesis, an open parenthesis, because you do not want negative 0.5 included, because that's the intersection point, and would go up to all the x values between negative 0.5 and positive 3 is where the line is above the parabola. And so it would be negative 0.5 with a parenthesis to positive 3 with a parenthesis. That would be the solution set for this inequality. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now that we've talked about how to find the domain and range of a function from its graph, and also how to solve equations and inequalities graphically. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about increasing and decreasing intervals and also local max and local minimum on a graph.